Uh, be, between you and I, we've never physically met, but I've had you on the radio maybe ten times over the years. I'm a practicing Roman Catholic. Can I share with you my personal feelings about this race? Is that fair to do? Sure. I love the positions of Rick Santorum. When I go to Good Shepherd or St. Vincent's and I talk to Catholics when I walk outside, almost to a man or to a woman, they're saying if they were going to elect the Archbishop in Milwaukee, it would be you. They have a sense from the media or from you that somehow this campaign got off track when you talk about puking relative to John F. Kennedy, when you talked about not going to college and talked about birth control pills, even Catholics that go to sleep at night with a rosary in their hands did not vote for Rick Santorum in Michigan. The polling indicated that Catholics in Michigan did not vote for you because of those issues which are in the weeds. Now, the media may have put you there, but you also talked about it. You were the guy who had those speeches talking about throwing up you, you were the guy talking about BCPs and condoms and prenatal care. You know, don't you bear some responsibility for the media coverage when you're the guy that brought it up? Well, uh, I wasn't the guy uh, that brought up some of these issues, number one. Number two, uh, the issue uh, uh, with, with respect to all of these things are issues that, Bill, you talk about on the campaign. Everybody talks about these issues on the campaign when it comes to, right now, contraception because of what Obama did in the, uh, in the HHS regulation. So that's why this issue came up. Uh, and I stuck, and I stuck to the issues, uh, on making sure that we didn't have government impose its values. The J. F. Kennedy speech came up because it was government imposing its values on people of faith. And uh, what, what happened, is we, which started, by the way, in, in the 1960s and 70s, where we used to have a respect for religion in this country. Yes. And as you saw, just, yes. just, the other, just the other day, or well, yesterday, where there was an amendment that was passed unanimously. Right. When, 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 when Hillary Clinton was trying to pass Hillary Care, right. now the left is saying, we're not going to protect conscience anymore. I think those are important issues. I'll talk about those issues. The fact that the media wants to twist it and turn it into something that isn't, that's what the media does. You know, Bill, I think the people are smart enough to figure out when someone who is religious is being ostracized because they're a Christian and they hold Christian beliefs, and that the media is trying to is trying to pigeonhole somebody when they're talking about mainstream values of freedom of religion in this country, and I'll continue to talk about those values. Well, or Rick Santorum, the Catholics in Michigan weren't smart enough to vote for you by your standard because Catholics well, in Michigan case, didn't Bill, vote for you. Stop. Hold on. Look at the look at the other races. Catholics in Michigan are not. This is this is what this is what folks don't understand about Catholic vote. Catholics is anybody who is a Catholic, not necessarily a church going Catholic. Look at church going Catholics in Michigan. I won by huge double digits with church going Catholics. I didn't do well among non church going Catholics. So look at the facts, Bill. Don't just take what the media spin is. Look at the facts. It's the same thing with, with folks of other of other faiths. I do very well among people evangelicals, people who go to church on Sunday. Others who don't go to church on Sunday, I don't do as well. By the way, most Republicans do really well um, with people who do regularly attend church and don't do as well. And no, that's that is unfortunately one of the divides. Senator, and this is my part. Let, let me jump in. This, I am a church-going Catholic. But there's not enough of us for you to win the presidency. It's enough to become a, a niche candidate like a Ron Paul. But I want Rick Santorum to go from where you are to where you need to be. And when you separate church-going from non-church-going Catholics, to me, that means you're unelectable as the president. Bill, look at every race that's been run over the past 40, 30 years, and you will see a divide between George Bush and Al Gore, between George Bush and John Kerry, between uh, John McCain and, and Barack Obama, between people who go to church and people don't. That's a, uh, you're, you're creating an issue here that doesn't exist, Bill. I mean, you've got to do your homework, buddy. <laughs> you have to do your homework. I do my on, homework. On, on where, on where, where, America, where America is coming down, and, and, and what, I've, what I'm talking about is, is that we are the we are the party that that believe in in values and and we stand up for the right to life we stand up for marriage we stand up for religious liberty and those issues are important to people uh, who who share those values and they vote for us and they vote for us in big numbers people who don't share those values bill don't vote for us in big numbers it's not a matter of being able to reach across the aisle it's where it's it's in in my opinion look at Pennsylvania I was able to win in Pennsylvania. Sharing, having the positions that I, that, 
that we are here discussing here today, and I was able to get people from the other side of the aisle, just like I did in Michigan, where I was able to get Democrats to cross over and vote for me in Michigan. Blue-collar Democrats, I want inner-city districts. I want uh, areas where, where blue-collar workers are. So your, your, your analogy, I went into his home state, Bill, where he where he grew up, where his dad was governor, right. and I came within three points and took. Well, well the you know, the last time you ran for all of us, all of a sudden, that is now a weak position. You're wrong, Bill. That's a strong position to go. I guarantee you, if what? he came to my home state of Pennsylvania, outspent I outspent him six to one, and I ran a, and I ran that race in Pennsylvania, he would not have gotten half. Senator, the last time you ran for office in Pennsylvania, you lost by eighteen points. Yeah, so Mike DeWine lost by 13 points here in Ohio in the same year. Now, it was last, a horrible year, and you know it. It was. All right, Rick Santor, I know you got to go in a couple minutes. Lastly, I have a friend here, Scott Sloan. It's on the Drudge Report that you hung up on Scott Sloan. Is that true or false? That's baloney. Wait, I, I, I called him right back. Our, the, uh, I, was, I was driving, and we lost the call, and I called him back two minutes later, and we finished the conversation. Drudge, again, shilling for Romney, uh, gets the facts wrong. All right, and Glenn Beck brought it up again, but Rick Santorum, when my wife goes to bed at night and she has rosaries in her hands, I pray as a practicing Roman Catholic you win the presidency. I believe there's not enough of us to win the presidency. Things have changed since Reagan and Kennedy. I want you to win, but I think the tactics you've employed are not going to result in victory, you know, but I hope it does. I, c please please come to one of my rallies. Please come and, and, and see what I talk about out on the stump. The fact that the media is out there trying to push these issues and uh, and continually do this, this is not what my campaign's about, Bill. My campaign's about manufacturing and energy and, and getting and getting people have, having people to have freedom and get rid of Obamacare and lower taxes. I've got a bold economic plan. That's what I'm talking about on the stump. Don't buy into the media hype that's trying to pigeonhole, as they do with every conservative, try to pigeonhole them, and particularly people of faith, where they try to say, because you have deeply held religious beliefs, that somehow or another you're going to impose that on everybody else. That's a bunch of crap. It didn't happen during my political career, and this is the media, again, trying to tarnish anybody who has real strong convictions. Don't you buy into their, to their fraud. Would you come back on with Scott Sloan? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I, I was on his program. All right. Well, Rick, I wish you the best. Raise ipsa loquitur, nonc pro tonc, arate frates, ave maria. God bless you, and may you win. And I hope there's more people in America that think like you when it comes to religious issues, and I wish you the best. I fear the worst, but I hope for the best. Uh, you got to have faith in America, man. You know, 80% of people in America believe in God, and, and a lot of those folks go to church. And you know what? We are a country that's founded on God-given rights and believing. But we, every day, folks, uh, people, people say, God bless America. Do they mean it? I mean, is, 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 do we, do we, do we, have, we, have we gotten to the point, Bill, where we don't believe in God anymore in America and that somehow or another things are going to be okay? I, you know, uh, I, I just don't think America's changed quite as much as you believe it has or the media would try to convince you it has. I say let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I'm all for that, Bill. St. Francis. Thank you very much, Rick Santorum. Thank you. All right.